James, come here. Yeah? You're looking forward to riding these spruce string wheels? Yeah, sir. It's going to be great. Oh! oh. <laughs> Hey Wheel Dorks! Welcome back to Ryan Builds Wheels and thanks for tuning in. Today we got something I've been meaning to do for a while. I'm going to build a pair of wheels whose spokes are made from string. Let's get stuck in! The spokes in question come from Minnesota based Bird. A little behind the times on this one, but hey, I'm an exceptionally busy wheel builder. The hubs come from Vitex, and I chose the Senti P130 30mm wide rim with uh, supposedly no weight limit. Let's see how that gets on, and let's get building! The bird spokes are made from an advanced polymer called Ultra High Molecular Weight Polythene, or UHMWPE for short, or UMFWE. At one end you have a loop. This isn't reinforced, this is all that polymer material. Uh, it then has a thinner section uh, where the spoke starts to get less stiff. You can see that junction right there until you get to the threaded end. Here you'll see that you have a standard steel threaded portion. It's just a 56 TPI 2mm thread like any other spoke. This is uh, an untreated piece of stainless steel. It's not been polished or anything like that. You've got this flat here and that is to stop the spokes from rotating during the build because the spoke kit comes with a tool to stop that. In terms of the threaded portion being bonded into the polymer, that steel portion goes all the way down the length of this area here. This is completely solid. As well as vibration damping properties, one of the primary reasons a lot of people are keen to try out bird spokes is the weight of the spoke. Therefore, let's compare it to one of the lightest spokes on the market that we have in stainless steel, the Sapim CX ray. Let's bring in the gram scales. I promise that I uh, only ever use this for measuring spokes, so never used for any other material whatsoever. Sapim CX ray, same length as the bird spoke that we're going to weigh, 4.79 grams. The bird spoke. 2.5. That's going to be a significant weight saving once you scale that up. There are several considerations and specialisms when working with bird spokes. First is that spoke lengths are going to be vastly different. Bird's own spoke length calculator. The metal spokes end up much shorter than the suggested length for a bird spoke. Another must is the use of double square nipples. Those nipples have a square at the top as well, and that allows them to be trued externally. Hub spoke hole preparation is one of the elements that Bird want you to pay attention to most. That's because sharp machined edges on normal spoke holes can cause cuts or abrasions to the spokes. This is, I'd say, one of the very few drawbacks, aside from cost, of the Bird spokes. So what Bird want you to do is to utilise Bird's hub tool gives a nice rounded top surface rather than that angled junction to the holes in your hub. The outbound and inbound sides of both flanges need this treatment. This definitely takes some getting used to and some practice. Holes cannot be too shallow or too deep or you will create additional sharp edges. Once you've rounded out those spoke holes sufficiently to the correct depth and got as even a machined surface with as little chatter marks as you can, then it's time to polish those holes ever so slightly using the rubber polishing bit that is provided in the kit. Lacing a hub with bird spokes requires a few specialist tools. A wire puller, that's going to be used to hook the spoke after it's been pulled through with this piece of wire. Scarily enough, the spokes are then going to be held in with these tiny little things here. These are just additional portions of the 
same material the spokes are made from. Grab one of your spokes, take the wire loop, and install it on the spoke. You're then going to take the hub and feed your wire loop through the first hole that you want to lace that in. You can't pull this through by hand. This is going to require quite the yank to start with. Pull that through. Grab the awl that they've given you and open up that spoke just a little bit. And now we can just remove this. Once you've opened that loop with the pole, then you're then going to take just one of these tiniest little bits of the material and it's going to be placed through that loop. You need to be quite forceful. There we go. Perfect. I thoroughly recommend lacing the whole hub first, installing the spokes before you attach and lace to the rim. I cannot overstate just how much time doing it this way is going to save you. Additional time savings my end were had because I'm fortunate enough to have one of Johnny Noble's Noble Lacing Stands. This is a wonderful piece of kit that allows you to hold the wheel in a position that you're comfortable with and to lace in comfort whatever hub setup you might have. More on that in the future. Once the wheels are fully laced, it's time to get that initial spoke tension in. I've talked about nipple drivers in a previous video. Go and check it out. Initial tensioning of a bird wheel is just like any others in this case, only you'll see that I have to use the provided tool to stop the spokes from twisting. At which point, it's time to grab your favourite internal nipple driver. All of those shown here from Park, BSC Tools and Envy are for a square drive nipple. You're going to need the spoke holder provided by Bird. And if you don't have a square drive or external nipple driving tool, then this is the process that you'll have to use for tightening your spokes. However, that takes some time and it means you're not using the double square nipples that Bird want you to use, so not advised. Dress relief is also key in a Bird build and they specifically want you to grab diagonal spoke pairs. I tried both ways, both diagonal and parallel pairs and found there to be little difference. I imagine that they want you to grab diagonal pairs to avoid damaging any coloured coating on the spokes black in this case, as you stress relieve. Next comes tension balance. Bird themselves say that on a Park Tool TS2, you're looking for a reading of 15. That tool only gives an indication of its own scale. It doesn't give you a reading in kilograms of force. So like any tensionometer, you're then going to need to cross-reference this. Although, of course, Bird being a proprietary spoke, not many tensionometers have tension charts for such spokes. Like any wheel build, tension balance and truing both radially and laterally becomes an iterative process, although only more so in the case of a bird build, because we're going to have to do this a total of three times, leaving the wheel to hang overnight in each case. As those spokes stretch, so tension is going to go down, and that's one of the things that makes building with these spokes so specialist and labour intensive. You've got to allow them to rest. So as the spokes elongate, tension drops, you then bring it back up. It's worthwhile noting that I've already seen systems online building machines specifically to stretch and pre-tension these spokes before they get installed. So that's pretty advanced stuff. But how do we know what tension we're at? Bird suggests that we should be building to about 100 kilos of force but I want a more accurate way of measuring that. Enter the spoke tensionometer calibration device. This is very much a homebrew version that Pi over at clandestine.cc helped me to brew up here in shop a little while ago. And honestly, it's just a big plate of spare aluminium fixture stuff that we had lying around, all hooked up in such a way that we can put a spoke into the assembly and apply tension to it. I can then take any spoke type, such as bird spokes, pop it in this device and bring the spokes up to tensions and start mapping what readings for each tensionometer that I own I'd expect to see for that spoke. 
this is great because I can now use a higher end, more accurate tensionometer from P and K Lee to finish these wheels off rather than having to rely on a 60 pound tool from Park. I did have to manually stretch the bird spoke that I tested to allow it to finally reach the target tensions I wanted to get a reference for. And so I set about the final round of truing, tension balancing, and getting these wheels to where they need to be. And I've got to say, after you get over the initial technical aspects of assembling these wheels and accepting that they're going to behave in a certain way, it's like working with a very thin spoke like the Sapim Laser, only times 100, then hey, look, these wheels turned out an absolute treat. I'm super happy with them. Weight savings were considerable. This pair turned out at 1500 grams bang on the pair. That's crazy respectable and around about the same sort of weights that people would have been chasing for rim brake road stuff a little while ago. So we're on to a win there. Now that they're set up, it's time for my friend James over at Starling Cycles to go and give them a spin. I'm super pleased with how they've turned out and it's been great fun. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. It was a labour of love. I really appreciate you guys being here and taking an interest in what I do over here at Ryan Builds Wheels. This pair is now done, dusted, and I'm super looking forward to doing more bird builds in the future. And in fact, Bird have now released a hub of their own. which uses a hooked design which means you don't have to go through that huge process of pulling them through and prepping your hubs which is really great because a lot of people don't necessarily want to void the warranty on a pair of expensive hubs even though as we've seen the system works very well i'm very much looking forward to doing more of those builds in the future and offering bird builds to anyone who wants them from here on in so if that's you get in touch and i'd love to help because i think this is going to be the future of high-end mountain bike wheels at the very least uh weight weenies cyclocross whatever they're great this pair is actually now available for sale they should be 1150 pounds down to 800 and i built them just for this video and all i want to do is recoup my costs so if you want a crazy light pair of 30 mil 27.5 boost wheels with bird spokes in any freer body that you need just get in touch until they sell if you can make it to the bristol area here in the uk they will be available for a test ride. That's a great opportunity to try out some new tech without having to splurge a bunch of cash to start with. What I'd really appreciate is a thumbs up on this video. And if you like what I do, best thing you can do for a new YouTube content creator who you want to see more content from in the future, tell your friends, hit that subscribe button, and see you on the flip side, wheel nerds. Let's see what happens next time. Woo!